Yo, and hello, everybody. Mike here, Baseball Collector. And I have to tell you, this is one of the videos that I've uh, been working on for a really long time, well over a year, honestly. And not continuously, but uh, it's it's an idea that's been percolating for a really long time. And, it, and I have to say it was inspired by guys like Mike Payne, uh, who has published books and articles, uh, 300 Great Cards of the 20th Century by Mike Payne, uh, 100 Great Cards of the 80s, you know, all kinds of different stuff that I love seeing those types of lists. I love seeing what people think about ranking different things. And my big passion, one of my huge passions, is autograph cards. And so what I did is spent a lot of time studying and going through all the different cards that have come out. Believe it or not, autograph cards have been around, you know, since 1990. And so I wanted to put together a list of what I consider to be the 50 greatest cards in baseball. And so what I'm going to do is put on a slideshow here and I've written this. It, it, it's going to sound like I'm reading what I've written, but I have written. <laughs> it is what I've written. But the reality is this is something I'd love to turn into an article or something that may get published by Beckett or somebody like that. I think that would be really cool. But uh, I'm going to go through this and show it to you now and we will be off and running. I cannot remember a time in my life when I did not love baseball cards. As an eight-year-old in 1981, I can distinctly remember opening packs and lining up the cards by team on my bedroom floor. I used to grade and collect with my friends, and value was of very little interest to me. I simply wanted to acquire as many cards of my beloved Texas Rangers as I could. I didn't think about the business of baseball cards. To me, the business of baseball cards was convincing my mom to buy me more packs during our weekly trip to the grocery store. As I aged, so did my taste surrounding the hobby I loved. The 90s saw the emergence of insert cards and parallels. I matured into this player collector. I hunted for every Daryl Strawberry card I could find in the slew of card shops in my area or at card shows that I frequented. My allegiance was easily bought, though, with amazing performances and partial, really, to any ranger with potential greatness. Ruben Sierra, Juan Gonzalez, Yvonne Rodriguez, and Nolan Ryan were focuses at various times. Also throughout most of my collecting youth, it was blasphemous in the hobby su to suggest a player autograph a baseball card. I would hear, are you crazy? You're going to ruin the card. Applying ink to cardboard was analogous to running over it with a car. Thankfully, many ignored the purists and many examples of fantastic vintage autographed cards exist. The idea of a player actually touching a card to endorse it creates a unique connection between the owner of the card and the player. I think as the card show circuit grew and more and more players began signing at shows, the attitudes towards the autographed cards began to soften. My first ever autographed baseball card was when I was a kid. I can't really remember the year, but I, I was really quite young. And my dad had told me of the story that he was going to go meet Phil Rizzuto at the ballpark and went to a card shop to get a Phil Rizzuto card for him to sign. My baseball card clueless dad ended up getting a beautiful 1954 Bowman. Rizzuto's beautifully scripted signature flows across the card. All these years later, I still treasure that card and treasure it in my collection. And that's a picture of it right there. I sent it in to get slabbed to protect it. But much like the sports that they chronicle, baseball cards have evolved over the decades to stay relevant in the minds of collectors and fans. The companies that produce baseball cards have been innovative over the years in an ever increasingly competitive market. Technology over the years has catapulted the grainy, poor quality cards of the 70s and 80s into glossy, shiny beauties with stunning photography. Baseball cards began as a popular insert into packs of cigarettes and other tobacco products. They were also, you know, included with candy. As the hobby grew even more after World War II, baseball cards became their own standalone product led by two major card manufacturers, Topps and Bowman. 
From the late 50s until 1980, Topps was the king of the baseball card world. Then in 1981, Donruss and Fleer began making sets of their own. The late 80s and into the early 90s is referred to as the junk wax era because of the enormous popularity of baseball cards. More and more companies launched their own brands of cards. Score, Leaf, Upper Deck. The complete saturation of the card market forced manufacturers to get creative. Somewhere at Upper Deck around 1990, the idea of inserting autographed baseball cards was brought to life. Today, autograph cards are incredibly commonplace. Nearly every player in the major leagues has a litany to choose from. But there was a time not that long ago when that was not so. Little did Upper Deck know as it randomly put signed Reggie Jackson cards into their flagship product of 1990 that they would be launching a new era. Nearly every set put out by the baseball card companies today incorporates autograph cards to entice collectors to buy the product. Including autograph cards of the hottest rookies and all-time greats has become a staple and are extremely sought after by collectors. You can find signed cards that sell for tens of thousands of dollars, and you can find plenty in the dollar boxes it shows as well. Their popularity has only grown within the hobby and will likely never go away. As an homage to the hobby I love and a dedication to my favorite part of the hobby, autograph cards, I decided to create a list of the 50 greatest autographed baseball cards. I did have a few criteria as I considered cards for inclusion on my list. First off, the card had to be inserted into packs or traded sets. Pack inserted redemptions also qualified. There are quite a few auto great autographs available as online exclusive or unorthodox methods of distribution. Secondly, I wanted this to be a list that would be attainable for people. At first, I only wanted to include cards with a print run of 499 or greater. However, I found during my research that there were too many amazing cards that I was compelled to include with lower print runs. I can tell you, however, that there are none with a stated print run of under 100 copies. No one of ones. If you can find the cards and have the cash, then you can complete this project. It also eliminates a lot of the incredibly rare cut signature cards from consideration. Lastly, I only included cards between 1990 and 2012. I thought anything newer than a decade had not had enough time to really cook into legendary and greatest of all time status. This isn't a list, though, of the 50 most expensive autographs, however. I think it does give a good representation, though, of the hobby history in this sector of autographs, showing examples of some of the most classic sets and a cross se section of some of the greatest players. I don't proclaim that this list is perfect, far from it. Greatness is certainly subjective. I mean, it is it the card? Is it the design? Is it the player that makes it great? Is it the story behind the card or that card's impact on the hobby? The reality is, I believe it's a little bit of all of that. I expect criticism for the cards I have chosen to be part of this list, as well for the cards that I left off of it. In fact, I welcome the debate. To narrow the list of all the autograph cards ever inserted into packs to just 50 that I consider to be the best is to invite criticism. Lists like this are a lightning rod for hobby enthusiasts to naturally inject their own opinions. This is simply mine. And so here we go. Here is my opinion of the greatest baseball cards ever inserted into packs that are autographed. In the height of the junk wax era, Upper Deck tried something new. Find the Reggie was the slogan. The massive overproduction made it an extremely difficult task. Limited to just 2,500 hand number copies, it made Jackson a face for the hobby. But this is the card that ushered in the use of autograph cards that now virtually every set uses. This was the first mainstream set to use machine numbering. The 1991 Donruss Elite Ryan Sandberg. I can imagine that Sandberg's hand was pretty tired after signing 5,000 copies of this card. The 1991 score Mickey Mantle. 
Mano was one of the first superstars to embrace the idea of signing autographs at card shows for a fee. It is not a surprise then that he was one of the first players to also sign heavily for baseball card manufacturers. This score mantle has 2,500 copies. 1991 Upper Deck Heroes of Baseball, Harmon Killebrew. After the success of the Find the Reggie campaign, Upper Deck amped their autograph game in 1991. A trifecta of Hall of Famers were inserted into the Heroes of Baseball set. They included Fergie Jenkins, Gaylord Perry, and the smooth script of Twins great Harmon Killebrew. 3,000 of each player were produced. Nineteen ninety one Upper Deck Hank Aaron Heroes. Upper Deck also continued having baseball greats sign checklist cards. There's twenty five hundred signed by the all time home run king, at least at the time, Hank Aaron. Nineteen ninety one Upper Deck Nolan Ryan Heroes. It only seems fitting that Upper Deck would also include the all time strikeout king. Nolan Ryan signed 2,500 these, of these checklist cards as well. 1992 Donruss Elite, Cal Ripken Jr. In year two of Donruss Elite autographs, you already saw the Ryan Sandberg, another Hall of Fame infielder was featured. This card, Iron Man Cal Ripken Jr., also had 5,000 copies, but is an extremely hard pull. 1992 score franchise autograph Stan Musial, Mickey Mantle, and Carl Yastrzemski. In 1992, score decided that three greats of the game were better than one when they had Musial, Mantle, and Yastrzemski all sign one card. Only 500 of these were produced, and the use of gold ink was a nice touch. 1992 score Joe DiMaggio. Score continued to score by having the Yankee Clipper Joe DiMaggio signed cards for a tribute set. There were five different cards in the set and each had 500 signed copies for a total of 2,500 cards. Another interesting quirk was that Score had him sign the back of the cards. That is kind of weird. 1992 Ultra Commemorative Tony Gwynn. 1992 Ultra set was already cool. Great design and beautiful photography, but Fleer spiced it up even further. There were 10 cards with 2,000 copies each signed for this commemorative set honoring Tony Gwynn. But you must be careful and ensure that the cards are embossed by Fleer to be legit. 1992 Upper Deck Heroes, Joe Morgan and Johnny Bench. One of the first multi-signed cards ever featured these two key members from the Big Red Machine. Bench and Morgan each signed 2,500 copies. For the third year in a row, Upper Deck inserted a great baseball player into packs. It was, hobby home, it was a hobby home run to land the Splendid Splinter. This one again is limited to 2,500 copies. 1993 classic best gold autographs Barry Bonds. This hand numbered to 2050 is Barry's first pack inserted autograph. By the end of 1993, Bonds had moved to the Giants and had already won three of his record seven MVP awards. 1993 Leaf update Frank Thomas. Cardmaker Leaf jumped into the autograph card game in 1993 with young slugger Frank Thomas. This is a highly sought after card and it, there's only 3,500 copies of it. 1994 signature Derek Jeter. Being hand numbered to 8,650, this is one of the most obtainable early Jeter, Jeter pinnings on a card. Looking young on a card, <laughs> on this card, you would not know he'd eventually become Mr. October and win several World Series with the Yankees. 1994 Topps Archives, 54 autographs, Hank Aaron. 
Signed reprints of key rookie cards would eventually become commonplace, but this was one of the first. The 1954 rookie of the Home Run King is a classic image, and it is only enhanced with the autograph. This card is highly susceptible to forgeries, so beware. Uh, one of my favorites, 1994 Upper Deck, Mickey Mantle, Ken Griffey Jr. Considered by many to be the greatest autograph card of all time, this Mickey Mantle and Ken Griffey Jr. dual signed card screams greatness. There's only 1,000 copies. 1996 Leaf Signature Autograph Silver, Mariano Rivera. For the Yankees closer from Panama, his first autograph card was in the 1996 Leaf Signature Autograph set. There's actually three versions, but the silver version with a print one, run of 1,000 really pops. He would eventually become the all-time saves leader and the first person unanimously voted into the Hall of Fame. 1997, Donner's signature, significant signatures, Stan Musial. Stan Musial was a prolific signer his entire life, and this is one of the easiest Musial on-card on autos to get. There were 2,000 of these produced. 1998, Donner's signature, Millennium Marks. This list must include a card from the 1998 Donruss Signature Millennium set. This groundbreaking set was huge in scope and immensely popular. Each player was supposed to have their base auto numbered to 1,000, but many players ended up being short prints, including this Tony Gwynn, of which there is a stated print run of only 900. 1998, Donruss Signature, Significant Signatures, Sandy Koufax. Getting a Sandy Koufax autograph in one's collection is not easy, but the left arm of God signed 2,000 of this card for this star-studded set, so you have a better shot of finding one of these than hitters had of scoring runs off of Koufax. 1990 Fleer, Sports Illustrated, Eddie Matthews. Combining autographs of great players and classic Sports Illustrated covers, brilliant. This Eddie Matthews shows not only a great Eddie Matthews signature, but also the very first cover of Sports Illustrated. 1999 Upper Deck Century Legends Epic Signatures, Greg Maddox. Upper Deck continues to raise the bar with this beautiful set, amazing layout, great background, the autographs just stand out so much on this. And to get a Mad Dog autograph is really great. And this one is fantastic. 2000 Fleer, Greats of the Game, Mike Schmidt. This is one of the most collected sets all time by autograph enthusiasts. A clean design really allows the player signature to pop. It is especially evident on this card of Michael Jack Schmidt. The lifelong Philly is considered by most to be the greatest third baseman of all time. 2000 Tops Traded Autographs, Miguel Cabrera. Just 17 years old when this card was released, Miguel Cabrera would go on to become one of the greatest right-handed hitters in baseball history. Be careful with this one, though, because the autos fade really easily. 2001 Bowman Chrome, Albert Pujols. This card with a print run of only 500 copies is easily Pujols' most desirable signed card. There is no doubt Pujols will one day be enshrined in Cooperstown and no doubt this card belongs on this list. 2001 Donruss Signature Notable Nicknames Ernie Banks. Few players are infused within the history of a franchise like Ernie Banks. He is so associated with his team that his nickname is simply Mr. Cub. Donruss made a great card here with may maybe the most notable nickname of them all. 2001 Fleer, Greats of the Game Autographs, Buck O'Neill. Few who have seen the Ken Burns baseball documentary can forget the eloquent descriptions of the game by Buck O'Neill. His contributions are legendary, and this is one of only a few Buck O'Neill autograph cards that you can get. He also got his just due in 2022 when he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. 2001 Fleer Greats of the Game autographs, Willie Mays. 
Prepare your wallet to hurt when you go to buy this maze auto. The scarcest of them all in this insanely popular set, there's only 100 copies of this autograph. 2001 SP Legendary Cuts Autographs, Walter Johnson. It's amazing to think that Upper Deck could come up with 113 copies of Walter Johnson's autograph for this iconic card. The Big Train is a tough auto in any format, but getting this card is really difficult since most are tuck away, tucked away in the collections of set collectors. 2001 SP Legendary Cuts Autographs, Jackie Robinson. Almost all of the copies of this Jackie Robinson card from 2001 SP Legendary Cuts are cut from bank checks, but that doesn't take away from the splendor of this card one bit. 2001 SPX Autographs, Ichiro Suzuki. Bursting onto the scenes after seven all-star seasons in Japan, Ichiro made a huge splash in the majors as well as the card market. He won both the Rookie of the Year and MVP in 2001. 2001 Sweet Spot Signatures, Roger Clemens. Leave it to Upper Deck to continue to innovate by combining baseball leather and autographs and cards in this unique set. The Roger Clemens card, whether or not you believe he believe, belongs in the Hall of Fame, is just a beautiful example from this groundbreaking set. 2001 Topps Golden Anniversary Autographs, Tom Seaver. Topps celebrated its 50th anniversary in style when it released this gorgeous and hard to pull set in 2001 flagship. There are definitely some names in the set that are head scratchers, but there are also some truly spectacular cards as well, and this Seaver is one of them. 2001 Topps Heritage Real One Autographs, Willie Mays. In 2001, in light of the 50th anniversary of producing cards, Topps also began a journey dedicating a set every year to a vintage design. They called it Heritage, and it is now one of the most anticipated releases every year. In addition to base cards of modern players using a vintage, vintage design, they also included autographs of current stars and veterans. This Willie Mays is one of the most beautiful in the inaugural series, featuring the Mays 1952 Topps image. 2001 Tops, the shot heard around the world, dual buyback autograph, Ralph Branca and Bobby Thompson. Tops commemorated one of the greatest moments in baseball history by inserting this 1991 Bowman card into 2001 packs of Tops. Signed by the hero, Bobby Thompson, and the goat, Ralph Branca, the Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. 2001 ultimate collection Ichiro. By the time this card came out in late 2001, the Japanese outfielder was already known by just one name, Ichiro. And you can see that here on this highly sought after rookie card numbered to just 250. 2002 Fleer Greats of the Game autographs George Brett. The last in the line of the spectacular Greats of the Game autograph sets, the 2002 version might have meant the end of an era, but definitely not an end for hunting for collectors, as shown by this beautiful George Brett card. 2002 SP Legendary Cuts Autographs, Lefty Grove. In 2002, Upper Deck continued to add obtainable autographs of some of the great old timers. This is another great design as well. Believe it or not, there are 194 of this card of Lefty Grove that were produced. 2002 Upper Deck Vintage Signature Combos, Carlton Fisk, Johnny Bench. During the 1970s and early 80s, the catcher position was dominated by two players, Carlton Fisk in the American League and Johnny Bench in the National League. This gorgeous card features both autographs on card and it's serial numbered to just 100 copies. 2004 Tops all-time fan favorites autographs, Cy Berger. How could any word or any list with the words greatest and baseball cards in it not include Cy Berger? The father of the modern baseball card finally appeared on a Tops card in 2004, 
and is a wonderful and fitting tribute. 2005 Donner's Signature Hall of Fame Autographs, Duke Snyder. Easily one of my favorite autograph set designs of all time. The player picture, the Hall of Fame logo, the autograph, it all just works. Too bad they're all sticker autos. Known as a Dodger great, I love how this Snyder shows him in a Mets uniform. 2005 Ultimate Collection Signature Collection MVPs, Bob Gibson, Denny McLean. In the year of the pitcher, 1968, two hurlers stood above all the rest. Bob Gibson and Denny McLean not just won the Cy Young Awards in their respective leaves, leagues, but they also won the MVP award as well. That accomplishment is given a beautiful tribute on this ultimate dual autograph. On top of that, they faced each other in the World Series with McLean's Tigers besting Gibson's Cardinals. 2006 Bowman Chrome Draft Picks, Clayton Kershaw. First Bowman autographs have long been chased by collectors hoping to pull the next great player. If you were one of the lucky ones to pull this Kershaw auto back, Kershaw auto back in the day, you were handsomely rewarded with one of the Dodgers' greatest ever. 2009 Bowman Chrome Draft Prospects, Mike Trout. When this card was released in 2009, many collectors had no idea who Mike Trout was. They would learn soon enough. For most of the 2010s and 2020s, he's been the best baseball player on the planet. 2010 Bowman Prospects Autographs, Stephen Strasburg. Strasburg was one of the most highly touted prospects in years, and his card prices reflected it. There are several rookie autos of his to choose from, but this one says it all for me. 2010 Exquisite Collection, Diamond Club Signatures, Derek Jeter. A very appropriately named set, Exquisite, is just that. The design is clean and beautiful. The autograph stands out. And who better to get from that set than the captain himself? 2011 Bowman Chrome Prospects Autographs, Bryce Harper. The Nationals were drafting well in the early 2010s as they chose a young slugger from Las Vegas named Bryce Harper. He hit the hobby by storm and his autographs were extremely sought after. 2011 Finest Rookie Autographs Refractor, Mike Trout. Limited to just 499 copies, this might be Mike Trout's most obtainable signed rookie card, but that doesn't make it cheap. Shiny and sweet. Gorgeous card. And lastly for the list, the 2012 Topps Five Star Retired Autographs, Hank Aaron. There were some heavy hitters included when Topps launched Five Star in 2012. Few bigger than Hank Aaron. Considering it's numbered to 208, it's actually reasonably easy to find. Just be aware that Five Star was plagued with quality control issues and almost every card that you'll see has severe chipping. So that's it guys. That is my opinion of what are the 50 greatest autograph cards ever produced. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your comments below. Certainly feel free to disagree. And I just, uh, again, hope that some of that resonates with you. I hope that you uh, watch that and thought of those cards and their impact on the hobby and maybe even have some of them. Maybe it's a project you'll go after someday. Who knows? But uh, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys.